In this video we move on to kinetic modelling and specifically we will start with gold standard two tissue compartment modelling with the arterial input function. The form of the model we will work with is shown on this slide, the central model, the two tissue compartment model, and the hope is that we can separate transport of the tracer from the binding processes, but to do that we need to know the concentration of the tracer in the arterial plasma. To find out more about kinetic modelling, you can see our documentation and there's also more information provided in our basic application course. To perform kinetic modelling, we first need time activity curves. For this reason, we will start in the view tool and we'll use the example PKIN1. So from the demo database, we can search for subjects with the name starting PK. This reveals six potential subjects. Select PKIN1 and from the available series, select the dynamic pet. First, we can adjust the upper threshold. A value of 30 kilobecquerel per cc is good for this example. And then we can explore the data with the time frame slider. We see that the tracer rapidly appears in the brain and then washes out over the time of the study. A good strategy to see the anatomy more clearly for drawing VOIs or checking the location of loaded VOIs is to create an average image. Use the Tools tab, Averaging sub-tab, and create an average of all time frames without replacing the dynamic data. Again, we can adjust the upper threshold. We see that the average has resulted in a clearer picture of the tracer distribution throughout the cortex with a very low concentration in the cerebellum. Next, we proceed to the VOIs page, where to save time, we can load pre-prepared volumes of interest. For this example subject, we have three sets of VOIs available. Select the first one, the CPFPX Bolus 13 VOIs. When they're overlaid on the average image, we can see that they correspond well to the overall anatomy, which means they'll be good enough to extract time activity curves. To get those curves, we switch back to the dynamic data using the list in the top right. And then we can calculate the time activity curves using the kinetic modeling button to the right of the selected statistics configuration. The time activity curves are previewed in this time activity curve preparation dialog. In the lower right, we can select the type of models that we want to work with in the kinetic modeling tool. In this case, the two tissue compartment model falls under the blood based models. And then I can send the time activity curves to the kinetic modeling tool using one of the send buttons in the lower left. First, we get a warning about the missing blood data, so we should load that before proceeding. From the kinetic menu in the lower left, we can load the whole blood activity. And in the, the dialog for blood data, we can search specifically for the PKIN1 example and we can select the CPFPX whole blood. Next, we need to either have a ratio to convert that into plasma concentration or a file that already contains the authentic plasma concentration. In this case, we have a corresponding curve with the authentic concentration of tracer in the plasma. So we can use load plasma activity Again, search for the correct example and select the CPFPX authentic in plasma file. To preview the blood data, 
we can activate the checkboxes below the main curve display. And we see both the whole blood data in yellow and the plasma curve in red. The whole blood data is still useful, even though we have this gold standard plasma data, because it allows the fraction of activity from the blood in each time activity curve to be estimated in the model. Since the plasma data already accounts for metabolism of the tracer in the body, we don't need to load a parent fraction. On the blood tab, we can also check the blood data, and we can add a delay, which is an important concept in studies with external measurement of the tracer activity. This delay represents a difference in timing between the PET data and the blood data. This represents the time it takes the blood to leave the body along the catheter you're using for blood sampling before the activity reaches the detector. We can enter a reasonable starting value for the delay on the whole blood tab and for the plasma. In this case, enter a value of 5 seconds for whole blood and for plasma. Now that we have the required blood data and we've adjusted the delay, we can go back to the kinetic modeling process. On the tissue tab, we can select an appropriate brain region to start the modeling process. Although whole brain would seem like a good average of all of the time activity curves, it might also be a mix of gray matter and white matter. So instead of using that, we can select another large but more homogeneous region from the list of regions. In this case, we can try the right frontal VOI. Next, we should select the model that we want to work with. So change the model selection from one tissue compartment to two tissue compartments to see the correspondence between the model data and the measured time activity curve. We can hide the blood curves again and we see that we already have an appropriate shape but we don't yet have correspondence between the two curves. On the right hand side we see the default starting parameters for the two tissue compartment model and these will be adjusted when we fit the model. A first model fit can be tested by clicking fit current region and then using iterative methods PMOD finds rate constants for the model that produce the best agreement between the blue model curve and the measured PET data. The relative error in these estimates is shown to the right of the resulting rate constants and the residuals between the model and the PET curves are shown in the lower plot window. The delay that we entered on the blood tab can also be included in the model fitting and this can improve the reliability of the model results. So from the menu next to the fit current region button we can select fit region and blood delay. In this case we see a small change in our rate constants we see an improvement in the standard error and if we go to the blood tab we can see that by including the delay in the model it found a value of 9.77 seconds rather than the first educated guess of 5 seconds that we used. Back on the tissue tab the changes of the parameters using the different fitting options are best inspected using the show history button. Here we see a number of revisions of the model fit and what we're most interested in are the two lines with the data from the two tissue compartment model that we selected for fitting. In row 5 we see the first fit where we had our manually entered blood delay of 5 seconds and then in row 6 we see the updated fit after including the blood delay in the model. We scroll to the right and as well as seeing our parameters, we can also see model fit parameters. For example, the AIC column shows us the Aikaiki information criterion. The SC shows us the Schwartz criterion. In this case, smaller values indicate a better model fit. So this suggests that including the delay in the model improved the overall fit. Now that we have tested our model 
in one representative region. We want to copy the model and the starting parameters to all of the other regions before fitting them as well. At the bottom of the tool, just to the right of center, we have an appropriate shortcut to copy the model and parameters to all regions. Click on that button and then we can go back up to the top of the tissue tab and select fit all regions. Then you can step through the available regions using the shortcuts in the top right, seeing how the model fit is appropriate for each one. And when you want to have a tabulated overview of all of the results, we can use the view parameters tool in the lower right. In this case, we see a table for all of the brain regions in which the model was fitted. We see the model that was used, the blood delay, and the available results. These results can be copied to clipboard for transfer into something like Microsoft Excel. Alternatively, you can save the entire project using our built-in formats. From the Kinetic menu, the entire project can be saved as a KM file. So we recommend saving the project to the database so it can be easily retrieved. The model results in all regions can also be saved as a KM parameters file, which is a text file format that you can use for your own routines and also reload in PMOD for group statistics.